It is Fashion Revolution Week and I want to talk about how kimono or how wearing kimono changed my opinion on clothing in general. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. As a lot of you might know, I had some little accidents with cutting my thumbs and they're just still gross. This one is already free of its band-aid. This one isn't still and it hurts still a lot. Tying an obi is such a pain recently. So I ask you what should I do for this week's video and a lot of you seem to be fine with just a talkative video. And then I realized it's actually Fashion Revolution Week and that I actually always wanted to make a video talking about that topic. So here it is. This video is just my personal experience and opinion, but I hope it inspires some of you and probably some of you share the same experiences. For those of you who don't know about it, Fashion Revolution Week is a week that should make us think about our daily clothing, how it is made, where it is made, the ethical problems behind it as well as the environmental problems behind it. I think it's already a well-known fact that fashion is the second biggest or largest industry that pollutes our earth and I find this is very sad and we could do so much more about that. Um, you can read more about all those problems with the fashion industry, I'm not going into detail, on fashionrevolution.org. That's the organization that is behind that um, Fashion Revolution Week as well as behind that uh, Fashion Revolution Day. It's so hard to always say Fashion Revolution. <laughs> I'm so glad I kind of made it. <laughs> and in this video, I thought it's probably nice to share how my way of thinking about clothing changed with wearing kimono. I, by the way, started to wear kimono in 2012. It's already um, eight years. And I took my teacher's license three years ago. In 2012, I lived in Nagoya. I studied abroad there for one year. And I was living with my friend's family and my host mother was a professional kimono teacher and she became my first ever kimono teacher. She was also the person who introduced me into secondhand kimono because as probably some of you who are not on this channel and watch my videos for the first time do also think that kimono are only very expensive and you can't buy them cheap. That is not true. I thought so too, but it's not. You can buy them super cheap secondhand. I think my cheapest kimono was a few cents. I was a student when starting kimono and I definitely couldn't afford a new kimono that was tailored to my size. I had to buy kimono secondhand and I also bought all the accessories I needed second hand. That kind of then spread out to every area of my life and I started to buy even again normal clothing like jeans and normal jeans and t-shirts second hand. And we all know buying clothing second hand is a very very big and important step to save the environment. Even today my kimono wardrobe exists 80% of vintage or thrifted kimono and 20% are actually new kimono because I'm trying to support the traditional crafts in Japan as well, but it's pricey. So wearing kimono every day is for me only possible with vintage or thrifted secondhand items. The next reason or the next thing that really changed in my life is actually connected with buying things secondhand or vintage. Every kimono you buy vintage or secondhand is usually unique. That is also because most kimono are made by hand or they're really individually made. So it's really, really hard to find the same kimono with the same pattern. Plus even if you have the kimono with the same pattern, it definitely has a totally different size because every kimono is made to the size of that person who bought it first. So it's definitely impossible to find the same kimono again. And for me, this meant I had to maintain my stuff 
better. I had to take care of my kimono that I can wear them as long as I want them to wear. As I want them to wear, I want to wear them. Sorry. <laughs> but it's really just not for vintage and thrifted kimono. When you buy a new kimono, brand new kimono, that costs a little and you really invest money in that and you want to wear that kimono for a long time. So if something ever happens, you're about to kill yourself. Believe me. <laughs> I just really started to find kimono cleaners in my area I can trust. I know they can take care of every little stain. And I started kimono sewing, Vasai. And just to know how to fix if a seam rips or how to fill in holes and stuff like that. That is what I never would have figured out by my own. So I'm very glad I actually started Vasai. And not only that, with me sewing, I definitely started to mend all my clothing. Even my western clothes or normal clothes or however you will ref want to refer to it. And I also mend my husband's clothes. So maintaining my kimono made me maintaining my western clothes better as well. And sometimes you purchase a piece that just really won't never fit you. Never ever, whatever you will do, it won't fit you. Or you purchase a piece that is a more, more unwearable than you thought it would be when you looked at it in the store. And you brought that piece home with you. So what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? For me, learning Maasai also um, brought me really into, I would call it refashioning. So upcycling an old kimono into an obi or a haori. Those are things that were done ages ago and that was so normal in Japan to recycle every piece of clothing you have at home because the fabric was so expensive and valuable. Refashioning or retailing things was really something that I or a skill that I actually gained through kimono. And I think when you are a beginner at kimono and you're still thinking, oh my gosh, I will never sew that stuff, uh, me and a needle, oh no, it will so change, believe me. I was like that too. And now I'm just like, just sew it, that's so easy. And I'm not good at sewing. You can watch all my DIYs video, all my DIY video on this channel. I'm so bad at sewing, especially with the machine. Hand is so much better. <laughs> And when you refashion a kimono, today we have so much more ways to choose from because you could also make your kimono into a coat or a skirt or a dress because you have a whole bunch of fabric because we all know how much fabric a kimono actually needs and that would be too much fabric to throw away. And I think you can make so much nice things out of kimono. Plus it is just awesome fibers because most kimono are still made of silk and is gorgeous silk in very high quality and that shouldn't be thrown away that's something you should actually use that brings me to the next topic kimono made me think so much more about fibers what are natural fibers what um, feels good on your skin what i personally don't like because Kimono is hot because you wear all those layers on you and Japanese summers are especially hot. So you just kind of start to think about what you are wearing all the time. You also know that there are different kimono seasons and for example summer kimono are made of a fabric or fiber that is best for summer. My favorite summer fabric fiber you all know it is linen because linen is very cool because it lets the wind through and plus you can wash it which is just perfect for summer on the other side most winter kimono are made of silk because silk keeps your body warm and you're not sweating that much so you don't have to wash it that often or actually you shouldn't wash it at all but i will talk about that later and Thinking about that also made me think about how I purchase my t-shirts. 
I know for example that polyester is just awful and hot in summer and I know you can wash it but you can also wash cotton and linen so for me summer kimono are cotton linen I would never ever purchase a polyester kimono for summer because it's so hot and that's also how I think about my clothing when I buy t-shirts I usually only have cotton t-shirts 100% cotton for um, summer and I have some polyester clothing and I usually always wear something made of cotton right on my skin like my underwear and stuff and over that I would wear polyester and this makes me so much more comfortable and that's something I learned through kimono because my nanga jiban are usually made of silk or linen these are the two things I usually wear um, under my kimono and I feel so good with it and that's why I started to do this with my western clothing or however you want to refer it um, too because I just feel better with it yeah for me fibers are just such a big part of my life right now I know it sounds weird but it is <laughs> And knowing well about fibers also changes maintaining your fibers. And for me, a big topic is coming, washing your clothes. You can also be more sustainable when you don't wash your clothes or wash them right. For example, do never wash cotton with hot water because cotton tends to open up when it's washed in hot water and then all the color or the dye will be diluted was that the right word i hope so much that that was the right word so when you want to maintain your um, cotton t-shirts or even cotton kimono a little better wash it with cold water that's already better for your environment silk shouldn't be washed at all you just hang it up i usually hang my kimono up in the shadow after wearing them in an airy place for about a day and then I fold them and put them back in my closet. That's what I do with my kimono. So linen and cotton is one thing. Washed in with cold water, it's best for linen and cotton things. Um, silk and wool protein fibers shouldn't be washed at all and only dry cleaned when you really need it. But usually you don't just don't wash it at all or don't have it cleaned at all. Or if you really have to, go to a specialist and have it cleaned there. That is what I definitely do recommend polyester we all know when polyester is washed microplastic is released into the water and microplastic pollutes our environment especially our oceans the most so when you wear polyester kimono or polyester clothing in general I do recommend to wear several layers I think I already talked about that before wear several layers and put a cotton layer on under the polyester layer you will feel so much better and you could just hang the polyester up somewhere have it hanging there for a day and then you can put it back in your closet and you don't have to wash it that often anymore so this kind of maintaining or not washing or taking care of my kimono is also something i put onto or use for my western clothing wardrobe because um, it's just so much better for the environment, it's so much better for the fibers. So it's also definitely something you should think about. So what else do I have on my list? Um, you can tell I could talk about this for ages, but we are at my last topic. And in retro perspective, that is really something um, that changed a lot since I started to wear kimono. Because there are so many different kimono seasons you're thinking about what season is a season you always struggle with your coordinates outfits um, because you just don't have enough kimono for it and then you kind of start to think about what kimono would you like next for which season and I really started to kind of planning on what I'm going to buy next plus when I 
finally had my office job and was working full time and I had the money to buy new kimono, I was thinking about what kind of new kimono or what kind of producer or fiber or special weave is something I definitely want to have in my closet. And then I would just um, save all the money for one year or two years and then bam, buy it. <laughs> Those are things that really changed my way of thinking of Western clothes. When I started to buy clothing, think about it, I usually bought two t-shirts a month and now it's two t-shirts a year. Always in a store, do I really need that? Do I? Do I? Do I? It always echoes in my head and even though there are so many things I like and would love to buy, I'm kind of like putting everything back and then I go to the store and I bought nothing because I got so used to planning what I purchase next. Plan to buy it and save for it. You know you bought something good and you know you're going to wear it for a long time because you're also taking good care of it and mend it better. At least that's how everything changed for me. So that video was super talkative. If you made it until now, you're not subscribed to this channel, think about subscribing it. Um, if you have similar um, experiences or totally different experience, I would really love to hear how kimono changed your way of thinking about clothing, how your uh, wardrobe became much more sustainable through wearing kimono. Um, I would really really love to hear your comments and ideas about everything so start a discussion down below in the comments and feel always free to message me on instagram and yeah thank you so much for watching i talk to you in my next video bye